Da. Hey, good evening again, everybody. Welcome back to our Thursday night service uh, here at Hegwish. Uh, I want to speak tonight about selling out for the kingdom. Uh, if there was ever a day that it's important to do that, it's today. Uh, selling out to the kingdom means us selling off a lot of the things that Satan is trying to do in our lives. It's just tragic today that uh, the devil is so little uh, talked about uh, in churches. I, I get an opportunity, like I'm sure you all do, to hear um, some of these Christian teachers that are out there we love, you know, uh, Stanley and, and uh, uh, Swindoll, and uh, we, I hear this guy Jack Hibbs down here every once in a while, and then, you know, you, you've got, um, well, all these other names are escaping me. Um, love Michael, um, oh, the, the Hebrew guy, uh, can't remember his last name, you know, but with as good as these teachings are, and I need these teachings, you know, I hear so little about what to do with the devil. Uh, and Jesus tells us that if we'll, well, James tells us that if we'll draw nigh unto God, he'll draw nigh unto us. So we're going to be over in Matthew uh, chapter 6, uh, right around verse 22. This is more of a topical uh, message uh, that has a little bit of verse by verse, probably a little bit more than a lot of topics. But, but again, selling out for the kingdom, leading up to verse 22 of Matthew chapter 6, um, the scripture is teaching us about service to the needy. And we need a discerning spirit. We need the discerning of spirits to recognize the difference between needy and wanting. There's a lot of wanters out there, uh, but those that are needy, the word of God encourages us and tells us that if we have an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody, financially, physically, emotionally, just in prayer or, or holding a door open, um, we should do that. And it's not saying that, you know, we need to sell everything we have, uh, you know, to, and just give it to people. But if we have an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody, the word of God says we should. Uh, and then again, we're, we're leading up to uh, verse, uh, verse 22 of Matthew chapter six. Uh, the Lord talks about a good prayer life, which I most certainly need uh, a better one. That's for sure. Uh, the importance of forgiveness. And, you know, the Lord forgave us. And that's why we need to forgive others. And when the word of God teaches us here in Matthew 6, that if we don't forgive our Heavenly Father, doesn't forgive us, it's not talking about eternal security. It's not talking about a loss of salvation. That word forgive means to let go. If we don't let people go, then God's not obligated to let us go. It, it's a, it's a, it's really a word of encouragement to us, and it's hard to forgive people. We always want people to forgive us, but uh, it's hard for us to forgive people because those hurts many times go very deep, but they also does for other people. So, you know, just by memory or by knowing, experiencing these things, we need to forgive others because then God lets us go. Because if we have a problem, if we have if we have bitterness and forgiveness, and we've all had it, we you know we may even have some now to deal with. In fact, maybe we have to still deal with it every day in our lives. Uh, the the word here though is that that we're willing to do that. You know that you know it doesn't matter that we have the problem. It's, it's what we uh, do with the problem. Uh, because getting down to to verse twenty two, you know it's not what we know. Okay, it's who we know. And we need to make sure that we know Jesus Christ in his deity, uh, in, in his birth, life, death, resurrection, and what that means for us in our lives. Because to just have a knowledge of Jesus in our head is not going to get us to heaven. It's got to be in our heart. Our heart has to be changed. And that's what Matthew 6 is all about. This is what they call uh, the Beatitudes, or part of the Beatitudes, or what be our attitude. Uh, again, coming up to chapter, I mean, to verse 
uh, 22, uh, our responsibility in fasting, and of course, the ever so popular what we do uh, with our finances. Uh, that's coming up here. And um, Jesus is going to take these things now that he's been talking about even prior to uh, to Matthew 6, as we go come out of Matthew 5. But he's going to start tying these together now. He's going to start weaving together how all these things should be in our lives and how they should be working, abounding uh, to the glory uh, of God. And they all come together in something that's called our attitude. And you've heard me mention a long time ago or several times uh, in the past that uh, uh, years ago I brought a message in the book room by Pastor Worley. It's our attitude that counts. And it is so important that I learned back then that a lot of times, and when I say it's our attitude that counts, again, it's not what we know, it's who we know. Because knowing Jesus Christ helps us to let go of problems that, I mean, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for the Lord today in my life, well, I, of course, I wouldn't be around. Probably most of us could say the same thing. We wouldn't be, We wouldn't even be walking here on earth. But because I know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and I know I have to forgive, and I know I have to change, I know that I have to draw nigh uh, unto the Lord, you know, I have this life, this new life called Christianity uh, in my life. And it's my attitude. That's what the Lord looks at, you know, because, you know, when the Word of God encourages us and it tells us that God looks at the inward, we look at the outward you know now we can wear our attitudes on our on our sleeves so to speak but the attitudes come out of our hearts now in good and bad we know that how much evil can come out of a heart but so can so can good things and that's what our christianity uh, is all about so um it's important for us again now we're going to be in matthew 6 22 here in about 15 seconds if you're counting and in order to have this attitude in our life because it sure is easy to have a bad attitude today, isn't it? Come on. But that's up to us. I know, I misspoke on the 15 seconds. Do you know my youngest nephew today was telling me, a lot of us are familiar with the story about, uh, he, he says, you know, Lucky, he says, there's a story out there about you know, this guy who, you know, he, he starts telling me about this guy who has problems in his life and he's talking to his grandson and, and his grandson says, you know, well, Grandpa, how do you take care of these things? And and it just came down to that, you know, on the inside of us, you know, it's whichever one we let win, talking about our attitude and our and how we uh, act or react, because that's what our soul does. See, we need to have a healthy soul. We need to have a healthy mind, will, and emotions. That's what our soul is, because because our soul is a, is a reflection of what, what we think how we feel and how we act or how we react. And that's where our attitudes come in. So in order for uh, these beatitudes to work in our lives and to know Jesus, not just, you know, not just know him in our head, but to know him in our hearts, it's to allow the word of God to cleanse our souls from the impurities that attack us every single day. Verse 22 of Matthew 6, the light the illuminator of the body is the eye. It's our vision. It's what we see. And, and blind people can see also. They, they can perceive. That's, you know, this vision isn't just us physically seeing something. It's how we perceive things when we see them. How easy it is to see a group of people and cop an attitude. How easy it is to hear some type of verbiage out there and cop an attitude. How easy it is to be involved in a situation where then, you know, uh, I mean, look at the political thing today. You know, it's so easy to then cop an attitude, a, a bad attitude about things that are going on. But, you know, truth be told, you know, we're ambassadors. If you're born again, you are an ambassador uh, of heaven. You are an important representative of heaven here on earth. And 
with being an ambassador, we must allow the light and life of Jesus Christ to shine out of us because we're, we're foreigners here. You know, this world is not our home anymore. So we need to make sure that when, when it says in verse 22 of Matthew 6, that the light of the body is the eye. It's, the, it's what we see. And remember, Proverbs 29 tells us that without proper vision, Okay, God's people perish, the word of God says. We've got to know where we're going. We, we've got to know who we're looking at. We've got to know what a situation is all about. And if we close our eyes, if, if we choose, just as I mentioned about that story that, that my youngest nephew was telling me about, about you know who's going to win in our life with these attitudes, it, it's who we choose. That, that choice is up to us. The choice is mine, as, as the wonderful song says. That's up to us to look at the word of God and say, wow, God, I need more of that in my life. We need to recognize when we go in front of the mirror of our lives and we see the imp imperfections. You know, I've got my screen on right now and, um, you know, you all probably don't have yours on for uh, for whatever reason you don't. But I have mine on, of course, for the service. But when I look, I see these imperfections and I, I you know, I'm just like, wow, you know, <laughs> Good night, nurse. Thank God for those new bodies uh, that we're going to have. But so many of us, now I know when I walk away from the mirror, I probably forget some of my imperfections, but I don't forget all of them. But a lot of people do. A lot of people walk away from the mirror that God puts before their life and they look and they go, wow, that, that's really, that's, that's, not, that's not good. Look at that. Woo -wee, I, I need some help there. You know, who knows all the money that people spend trying to change their looks and, you know, but then they walk away and they forget how bad they really are. And we need to realize that we are nothing. We are absolutely nothing more than sinners saved by grace. We are saved by grace through faith. That faith is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, lest we should boast and say that we brought something to our salvation for God to work with. We, we were lost. We were eternally lost. We were we were spiritually depraved. We were we were dead in our sins until we allowed Jesus Christ, the light, the illuminator, you know, of of our body, is the vision. And when Jesus came and we saw him, you know, just just like uh, just like the uh, gathering demoniac, you know, you just want to run up to Jesus and hug him. Well, that's the Jesus we serve. And we need to go to him morning, noon, and night. We need to go to the cross every day and die daily to the things that we want because the illuminator, the light of the body, is, is, is our vision. If therefore our eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. In other words, if our eye is looking at Christianity, and how hard is it to be a Christian today? Come on. Now, I'm not saying that we won't drop the ball. I'm not saying we won't slip and fall. We will. That's why the Lord saved us, by the way. But what, what's wrong with helping some? You know, that young man that, that he did not have to stop what he was doing and, and come over and help me pick up my stuff. I, and this guy, this kid was young. You know, you don't see young people doing this today. What do we do? We, we reach out. We try and be a blessing. What we, what we meet out, the Bible says, will be met back to us. You know, and it, it will be brought back to us, pressed down, overflowing. That's why it has to be pressed down. Because if we reach out a blessing, if you want a blessing, you need to be a blessing. That's what the word of God says. So if, if our eye be single, if our eye be just forward for Jesus Christ, for doing everything we can to sell out for the kingdom, then our body shall be full of light. But if our eye be evil, if it, if it, in the Greek, if you look it up, it says diseased, or, uh, it, and, and it's diseased, it's in poor condition, the Greek says, because of a lack of use. See, that's what happens in Christianity. So many people, they get saved, two things happen here, they get saved, and they, and they find a church, and everything's a hunky-dory, but, but there's, there's not enough teaching on, you know, that we shouldn't be drinking, that we shouldn't be smoking cigarettes, that we shouldn't be smoking pot, you know, that we shouldn't be cussing and swearing, that that we that we should be abstaining. Evil communication corrupts good manners, the Bible says. 
So, you know, if these things aren't taught in the church, because, and the reason that they're not taught in the church is because that offends people. Why? Because people want to live their own life. Well, that life with us is dead. We are dead and our life is now hid with Christ and God. Because Jesus, it says in Colossians 3, 4, or 5, says Jesus is now our life. And if he's our life, then we need to give these things, this new life that we have on the inside, we need to allow that to come out. And as it comes out, it, it, it kills, it destroys the evil working of the flesh, the evil thoughts and the things that are, that are trying to bind us down. That's why we need, we need, we must sell out for the kingdom. Now, even if we can just do it just a tiny piece at a time, at least we're trying to do the right thing. At least there's a little bit of forward progression uh, in our lives. And so if our eye is evil, if it's diseased and, and it's in poor condition because of lack of use, that's what happens with, our, with the word of God. If we do not use the word of God, it becomes stale in our life. I think we all know this. If anybody's been saved for any amount of time, we know if we don't re if we don't read, we get stale. If we don't pray, we get stale. Sometimes we begin to stink even. So uh, going on in verse twenty three, uh, the whole body. Uh, if thine eye be evil, then the whole body is full of darkness. Now remember, if the eye is single, now single does not mean us and the world. Us and oh, let me do this a little bit. Oh, us and and let me be involved in this and us. You know, and and you know our new life and the old life. The, the, you know we can't we can't eat at the table of the Lord and the table of devils. We can't drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. This needs to be taught every day in Christianity. And there's a million ways to teach it to let people know that there is a real devil out there. He's like a big Pac-Man. Now some of you may not. It's okay. You may not remember Pac-Man. Now I'm not a. I, I didn't play games. I still don't. Thank you, Lord. And if you do, that's between you and the Lord. You need repentance. I mean, you need prayer. I'm sorry, you need deliverance. Sorry, did I say that? But you got this big Pac-Man devil out there. If you look behind yourself, okay, if you just turn around and look behind, you're going to see this ginormous Pac-Man devil who's doing everything he can to eat up the blessings that are in your life. And once those blessings have eat, get eaten up, what are we left with? We're left with yeah, I, I I remember Jesus. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool guy. And and but how easy it is to forget what this is why the Lord blesses us. This is why the Lord blesses our obedience. When we obey, he says, Here, let me encourage you a little bit more. But God can't encourage bad use. God can't encourage our mouth and our drinking and our and our evil thoughts. He not only can't, he won't. So it says, so remember. That if the eye be single, if the eye is selling off for the kingdom, then the body, our Christianity, is full of light. And we want to be like a Christian. You know, when we slip and fall, we, we want to pick ourselves up and allow the Lord to dust us off. You know, we want to step forward instead of backwards. But if our eye is evil, you know, if it's diseased with demons and all kinds of demonic pollution in our lives, then the body is full of darkness. But look what Jesus said. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Where is this taught today? Plain footsie with the devil. Making ungodly soul ties, mind ties, sex ties with things that are just out to destroy us. You know, we, we warn those around us of these things. But do we warn ourselves? So he says, if therefore the light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? Because we, we all know Proverbs 16, 25, I quote this probably every service, that there's a way that seems right unto us as people, but the ends thereof are the ways of destruction. Verse 24, no man can serve two masters. Okay, see, now, maybe in the Inquirer magazine, you may see a baby that has two heads, okay? But in real life, you don't. You know, we don't have two heads. We act like we do, but physically we don't because, you know, I mean, aside from, you know, a very, very minute 
percentage of people who are born with a deficiency, most people are born with one head. Why? Because two don't work. Okay. One has to be in charge. There has to be well, like a church, like, like a corporation, a business, you know, somebody needs to be in charge. But Jesus says no man can serve two masters, two controllers. Okay. For either he's going to hate one and love the other, or else he's going to hold on to the one and despise the other. We can't serve God and mammon. We can't serve God and just want the dingle dangles of the world. It does not work for Christianity. And Christians who don't care about those things become legends in their own mind. And that's why at the beginning of the message, I was mentioning that it's not about what we know, because there are a lot of smart people out there, it's, but they don't really know Jesus as in his deity. And, and remember, we'll never be able to get around John 7, verse 38, that says we need to believe on Jesus as the word of God says he is. You know, Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that I ask you to do? Jesus says, what shall a profit a man if he gains the whole world? And loses his own soul. A lot of us can quote that verse, but how about the second half of that? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? See, we're exchanging just to bring some kind of pleasure into our lives that is detrimental to our Christianity. And the word of God wants us to die to those things, to come before the cross, to die daily of those things. So going on, Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. Uh, you're either going to love one, hate the other, uh, or hold one and despise the other. We can't do it. We can't serve God. Now, God either needs to be our commander, Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Spirit that's living in our lives as Christians, needs to be the controller of our body. Because if not, guess who's going to control it? The demons are going to control it. The devil's going to control it. So, it says in uh, verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, verse 25, therefore, Jesus says, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Don't be anxious or troubled. Uh, it says in the Greek, take no thought for it. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for the body or what you should put on. Because the life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment, isn't it? Question mark. Because Paul says in in uh, in First Timothy six eight, he says if we have food and raiment, we need to be content. Now listen, I'm this isn't a guilt shame and condemnation. This isn't a throwing eggs at anybody. But let's ask ourselves, okay? Let's ask ourselves right now. I'm asking myself, as I'm asking you, if we were to hold our Christian lives up to God's mirror, okay, could we even come close? to saying that we are content with the little with the with just a few clothes or a little bit of food in our lives no our cabinets are full our our closets god bless my wife you know she you know she wants me to have nice clothes you couldn't tell by the ones i wear uh, but I, I i have i have a closet full of, you know wow and and you know nice stuff and and but you know I can only wear so many of those things in in a day you know every hour I could change you know and I'd still you know a week never get through half my closet and there's just something not right about that you know there's nothing wrong with having possessions as long as our possessions don't have us so Jesus said he says look, look at the fowls of the air he says the birds he says they don't sow he says they don't reap they don't gather into barns, okay? They don't go to the store and buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, they do here uh, live uh, by the gazillions around the Walmarts. And so if you go between two or three hours uh, as the nighttime starts to come, uh, your car will come away uh, spotted whitely, uh, if you know what I mean. And I mean by... The gazillions of these things are out there. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock's, Hitchcock's uh, movie, The Birds, can't do anything coming close to what we have down here at that time of day. But 
Uh, he says, behold, he says, think about the fowls of the air. They sow not, they reap not, they don't gather in the barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Brothers and sisters, aren't we much better than they are? I mean, they're just birds. I mean, they are God's creation, of course. But they don't have a spirit. Uh, animals, to a certain extent, I don't know about birds, um, but, you know, animals have a type of a soul, um, at least in actions and reactions, they have a soul. Uh, in fact, the soul of man, uh, is unregenerated, uh, is on the same level as animals, the Greek says. Uh, but he says, are we not much better than they are, question mark. Oh, and by the way, Jesus said, which one of us can by thought add one cubit unto our stature? We, no matter what we think, even no matter what we do, we can't change those things that are in our lives that aren't going to be surrendered unto the Lord. He says, um, he says, so uh, why take ye thought for raiment? He says, let's look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, they don't spin. You know, uh, the lily of the field is, you know, when the sun comes up and as the sun starts to go over, those things turn and, and follow it. Uh, and uh, he says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Uh, they toil not, they don't work. They don't spin, they... Well, they, you know, they don't, they, they follow the sun, but I mean, they don't have to do any kind of work to get, you know, uh, to earn money. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, all of his glory and everything that he was blessed with was not arrayed like one of these. Wow. Wherefore, if God so clothed the, the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow isn't, shall he not much more clothe us? All us of little faith. And isn't that what it comes down to? See, it's not what we know, it's who we know. And the only way to get to that place, that's why I love the story. I, I, I quote from it often uh, when I'm preaching about when uh, the disciples were sitting around with Jesus after the resurrection. And, and uh, Jesus said, well, you know, who do people say that I am? Well, some say you're this, that, and the other thing. And, and I'm sorry, this is before the resurrection. And was it before the resurrection? Pretty sure it was. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll find out after service and correct myself. Uh, but Jesus said, who do people say that I am? Well, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're one of the prophets. Jesus, but who do you say that I am? And, and that's really what it comes down to today, because uh, I'm not going to get to heaven by following Jesus in your life. I'm going to get to heaven by following the Jesus in my life. Now, if you're born again, you're, go you're getting to heaven, but our heaven is going to be determined what we do down here now and we can't hook on to people and think that we're building the kingdom you know the kingdom resides on the inside of us you know building that up so when we die we have that when we get to heaven we can't do that off of other people's backs we have to do that ourselves and that's why the church was never designed it was never never created to get people and take care of them from cradle to grave that's what the ones do today. They want to, you know, they want to make sure when they get you, they're going to keep you because, you know, they need your money. Let's face it. Oh, I, I know they want people to be a blessing too, but, <clears throat> you know, if you've not been around any of these big places, you know, I, I was not involved. I got a chance to be involved a little bit and wasn't involved in the, uh, uh, in the staff meetings or, or anything, but uh, the budget. Wow, because I, I, you know, I would hear what each department, you know, because each department would, of course, fight with each other on who's going to get more money, okay, you know, so they can put on the dog and woo woo people with the videos and the, and the light show that's out there and, and the crescendo, you know, of the music, everything, you know, le leading up to when the service starts and blah, 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 you know, and they'd be competing uh, for the money, and it is a lot of money it takes uh, these churches, and so you know they don't want to offend anybody for people to leave. But moving on, because I'm um, close to being out of time here, because uh, this is about our attitudes. This is about not what we know, but who we know. 
because who we know will determine what we do. Who we know will determine what our attitudes are. You know, the Bible says, uh, Proverbs 22, that make no friends with an angry man uh, and with the furious people don't hang around because we will learn of their soul uh, and we will learn we will learn of their ways and it will bring a snare to our soul, the Bible says. And that's what happens. When we're around wrong things, we, many times unbeknownst to ourselves, we begin to mimic those things. When we make, and I, I've just seen it over the years, over the years so often. I mean, you know, everywhere. And I, it was in my own life. Uh, I wanted to, I, I saw somebody years ago, and I told the Lord, I want to, I want to be like that. And I didn't want to be like that person. I wanted to be like, I wanted to have that Christianity in my life that that person did. And, and the Lord showed me, I hooked up an ungodly soul tie and, and the Lord broke that for me. The Lord, the Lord took care of that. But a lot of us, we make these ungodly soul ties with people, places, and things. And then we become like it. It takes over us. Romans six sixteen. to whomsoever we give ourselves over servants to obey his servants we are to whom we obey whether of sin or of death or of obedience and of righteousness so so jesus said wherefore if god so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow isn't shall you not clothe us oh us of little faith our attitudes are perfected by the exercising of our faith and if there was ever a day that we need to stand in faith because things are different. And what's going to happen here? I don't know. That's all up to the Lord. But things are so wrong. And evil is spreading in breakneck speed. And how about the days that were so dark a week ago, a month ago, a year ago? Look how much darker the days are today. And we've not even begun to see the darkness. Now, and I don't know if that's what I don't know if it's going to continue to be dark. Maybe the church will wake up. Maybe, maybe the Lord's trying to flag the church, flag us, say, hey, what are you going to do here? Well, I'm praying my militant this, that, and the other. That's not what God wants. God wants our obedience. Now, we should pray, but why should we pray? We should pray for his righteousness. We should pray, not for our wills, no psychic prayers. Well, you know, we're, how many people pray psychic prayers for the president? Now, let's just let's just admit it. You know, maybe just maybe because um, of things that we liked what was going on, you know, maybe we started to put our trust in man, and God says, "Well, we can't have that," because cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes his arm flesh. We're told. Now, I don't know. All I know is that things are different, but I don't have to be part of that. I I I, I can. I can avail this time of not being able to change anything with my attitude, with, with my words, with my thoughts, you know, but I can change myself. And we all can change ourselves. So Jesus says in 31, therefore, take no thought saying what we're going to eat, what, you, what we shall drink, or what we shall be clothed. Because this is what the unsaved do. Our Heavenly Father knows what we have need of. God knows. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, this isn't a pep talk. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, pat you on the back and, you know, we'll send you along. Listen, it's going to be okay because God says it's going to be okay. And we need to say, okay, well, then that's what I need to go after. I need to go after that God says it's going to be okay because God, you know, he says, don't be like the unsaved. Your heavenly father knows the things you have need of. Because seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, uh, and then these things shall be added unto us. And real quick, because I, I have two minutes left, so it says, you know, what does it mean to seek first uh, the kingdom? Well, Jesus gives us three examples of this. Real quick, uh, just a few verses, Matthew 13, uh, 44 through 47. So let's look at these real quick. This is Jesus gives us these three examples. One is of land or property, things that we own, okay? The second thing that he wants, that he's gonna talk about are the things that we consider precious. The third thing is, the third thing that we think about more often than anything else is, is almost is sus sustenance, food, 
or things that uh, were just talked about earlier. So in Matthew 13, going down to 44, this is what seeking first the kingdom means. Again, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, excuse me, is like unto a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found it, he hides it. And for joy, therefore, he goes and he sells all that he has so he can buy that field. And when we find out that Jesus is everything, when we find out that Jesus is so awesome, when we find out and we realize that, that, that wow, I mean, what, what an awesome thing to be a Christian. Well, man, how, how neat and cool and, and far out it is you know, to be a Christian. Yeah, I mean, wow, there's there's so many things to thank God for. We focus on all the negatives so often when all the promises are yea and amen, all of them. That good work that he started in us, he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen, you can, that, that's, that's God's blessings. If you want to look at his money in the, in the, in, in the bank of heaven, which doesn't fail. So when we find this, have we not found it? We found it in deliverance. We found it in teaching. We found it in fellowship. You know, we, we found it in being in agreement with the word of God. We found it in, in when you bring up the name, when you sow the seed. I'm not, I'm not talking about money. It comes back. When the word of God is put forth the way it should, it does not return unto his voice. And we sit back, you know, just like the disciples, they went out. Well, even the demons were subject unto us. Oh, isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome, Jesus? Yeah, but you know what's even more awesome than that? That our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Man, that we're going to heaven. That we, no matter what, if you're born again, you're going to heaven. Wow. Now there's something to party about. So when we find that, we hide it. Where do we hide it? We hide it in our lives. We grab it. That's ours. That's what the Lord is giving us. And then we make sure we, we sell, we cut off everything that we need to to make sure that that doesn't get stolen from us that joy not, not the salvation again the king of heaven is like a merchant man seeking uh, goodly uh, pearls so when he found one pearl of great price he went and sold all he had and he bought it so when we find out that the word of god i know we know this but sometimes i think maybe we forget maybe i don't know sometimes i do I forget where my blessings come from sometimes. And he says, when we find that pearl of great price, we need to sell everything we have to make sure we have that pearl of great price. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind, which one was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels and cast away the bad. See, when we see the good, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the gentleness, the faith, the goodness, the temperance, the meekness, you know, when we find all these wonderful things that are given to us from the word of God that he daily loads us down with benefits, we take it and we cast away the bad. We do what we can. So hopefully uh, tonight, this a little bit of encouragement for all of us to, we just need to hear this. Listen, Peter, I think it's Second Peter who, who says that, you know, he says, ah, you know, we add to our faith virtue and under virtue knowledge, under knowledge temperance, and you know, and all these things. And Peter says, if these things be in us and abound, Peter says, dun, 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 dun. Peter says, I know, just stay awake a couple more minutes here. Almost done, almost there. Second Peter chapter one. Your Bible needs to look like that. I don't mean, you probably don't have cameras on, but if you do, you know, just have a place for your notes. And uh, Peter says, you know, we add to our faith uh, virtue and virtue, knowledge and knowledge, uh, temperance, uh, temperance, patience and, and godliness and brotherly kindness and love. And, and uh, Peter says, wherefore, he says, I don't want to be negligent. Uh, to put, I want to put you always in remembrance of these things, even though you know them, so that we can be established in the present truth. The present truth today is that there's a big old devil out there who's stolen our country. And now, stolen the country that we live in. 
Now, you may be from another country. Maybe he stole yours a long time ago. Uh, but he stole ours. But this is not my home. And we should pray. We should encourage. Listen, we're peacemakers, the Bible says. And peacemakers make peace. So let's do what we can tonight to make peace to each other, to make peace to those things around us. Let's not get involved in things except to just trust the Lord. It, wow, isn't it wonderful when we wake up and we have another day to get closer to the Lord? Because one day we're not going to wake up and we're going to stand before the Lord going, wow, man, if I just if I would just have a little bit more time to fix things. That's what the Lord wants us to do. So make sure you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's great to know him as Savior. It's that Lord thing we have a hard time with sometimes. But all you have to do is ask the real one, the one of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to come in your life and save you from your sins. And if you do that, he'll do that. He, Jesus is a gentleman. And he'll come into your life and he'll save you. He'll save you from the guttermost uh, to the uttermost. Uh, and uh, with that, good in, good out, good in, good out. So uh, as we allow the Lord to push out that bad uh, in our lives, uh, we, you know, he does that for us when we get saved. But maybe you're driven, harassed, and tormented, and this is producing a compulsive behavior in your life, which is slowing down, stopping, or turning around your spiritual growth and progress. This is what demons are doing in the life of the believer. But Jesus gave us a remedy for evil spirits. He says, these, booyah, there it is, bam, as Emerald would say, these signs shall follow them to believe. In his name, cast out devils. I love it. Just, you know, there's not a more beautiful place uh, on earth physically than the Hedgewood Baptist Church. Uh, these signs shall follow them that believe in his name, cast out devils. Uh, the, gifts are, uh, uh, the gifts are for today. We also know that God heals today because he says in the word, he changes that. So with that, I love you all. Some of you all see tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that. Some of you all see in heaven. Uh, but uh, you all have a, a great blessed night tonight in Jesus' name.